Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to the Leader's Guide to Prioritizing Their Mind. My name is Amy Sanchez. I'm an executive coach. This is going to be the first of a three-part series that we're going to dive into to really help you get some, give you some tools and techniques. Today, we're going to be talking about prioritizing your mind. In two weeks, we're going to be talking about prioritizing your body. And in six weeks, we're going to be talking about prioritizing your soul. The ultimate mix, the, the optimal mix is tools and techniques that you incorporate in your day to day that incorporates all three of these things and tends to all three of these things. Now, I know you guys are all extremely busy corporate leaders and by hearing uh, perhaps there might be something else for you to add to your plate could already be anxiety inducing. I just want to reassure you the things that I'm going to be introducing today are small yet very meaningful changes that will um, optimize not only the way that you feel about the way you show up, but also positively impact the measurable outcomes that you produce. And so you can feel better. You can operate at your peak as a leader uh, and also as a human. Get back, back to enjoying your life. It's interesting. Since the pandemic started, there is no doubt that the expectations in terms of how we operate and the volume of emails and meetings has exponentially increased. And I'm going to show you some stats that are pretty mind blowing later on. What I'd like for you all, what I'd like to offer for you all to walk away with today is um, even in these new dynamics, what are some things that I can do so that all of these new expectations aren't going to throw me off my game. There is no shortage of people who need things from you at work, at home, family, friends, and the list goes on. But let's make sure you're giving yourself what you need to be available for all those people in the way that you want to meet. There's probably no better uh, example of this than what, what happened last night. Um, life is unpredictable. Uh, last night, my two-year-old started to complain that her stomach hurt. By 11.30, she was throwing up. And this happened every hour until about 5 a.m. Uh, and so I was up all night with her the night before my 200-person scheduled event. And it got me thinking, wow, wh what better example of how we can't control what's happening around us. I had no way of knowing that she was going to be up all night throwing up. But by incorporating some small practices, you can ensure that your mind and body and soul are ready for whatever life and leadership throws at you. With that, I'm going to go ahead and, and share my screen with you. Um, the Leader's Guide to Prioritizing Your Mind. There is no better example of how impactful your mind can be, uh, let me turn off this so you can, yeah, there you go. Uh, then what we see from the top Olympics in the world who we know spend hours training and they get to themselves to tip top physical shape to show up for this one event that happens every four years and prove their excellence and compete among their peers. You can do no matter what you can, you can put in so much time and effort to get yourself ready. You can go to trainings, you can go, you can have a number of different job roles and titles. You can have the best mentors in the world. But if your mind is not operating in a way that acknowledges and supports the value that you bring every day, and you're not giving your, your mind a chance to stop and strategize, stop and recharge, you can be hijacked. Does anybody know who this athlete is? I, I, I'm just going to give you a chance to type it in comments because I'd love to hear. Uh, I'll give you a hint. She's an Australian yeah. swimming star. And she competed in the Rio Olympics. And I'm going to tell you this story. And if you know her name, just type it in chat. A month before the Olympic Games, this athlete actually set the world record for the 100-meter freestyle. So everybody thought she was a shoe in to win the gold at the Olympics. Right before she was set to compete in Rio, she got a text message. So probably rule number one, don't look at your text messages before a big event. This text said, I'm so excited to watch you race. I have booked out a boardroom in the office and we're all going to be watching you. The magnitude of that text 
sent her into a mental tailspin. She suddenly realized how high expectations were for her around the world. The amount of nervousness and anxiety that she experienced flew off the charts. She got into the pool. She did what she had done thousands of times before. But because she was not in the right mental state, she ended up starting the race too fast. She lost her momentum. She lost her speed. And she ended up finishing sixth in the race. Uh, This swimmer is named Kate Campbell. So if any of you were trying to put that name together, that's who it was. Great example of how important it is for your mind to be in tune with how you want to perform, how you want to show up, whether it be in leadership and or in life. Flip side of that, We have some Olympic superstars who were not physically in any sort of shape to win and perform and get medals um, or who weren't quite well known. So these two, you might recognize these superstars. uh, The first one being Carrie Strug, 1996 Olympics. She had an injured ankle, uh, had to to nail this vault in order to win the U.S. the gold medal, and she did it. And there is her coach carrying her off with her ankle wrapped up. Um, Again, another great example of how your mind can take you to places that your body might not be ready for. Oksana Bayul, I so remember watching this Olympics. Um, This is when Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding were all over the headlines. Everybody thought Nancy Kerrigan was going to take home the gold. Oksana Bayul, this 16-year-old girl from Ukraine that no one had ever really heard about, nailed five triple jumps. Five. She ended up actually adding an extra triple jump because she felt so good, mentally felt so confident. And she won the gold. Oof, I'm getting goosebumps just even thinking about it. So if you don't think that your mind has an impact on the way you perform and the way you show up and the way that you experience joy in your life, here are three Olympics athletes that have a different story to tell. You all might be able to relate to this. Sleepless nights. I can't tell you how many people... um, reach out to me and say, Amy, I am a VP at XYZ, big company, and my mind just races at night. I haven't had a good night's sleep in years. This is a common common um, occurrence and kind of an epidemic that's happening right now. I'm just going to acknowledge there's a lot of pressure. When you're a corporate leader, there's a lot of pressure. When you're a corporate leader on the heels and still in the midst of the pandemic, the expectations have increased exponentially. So to share some stats with you to support that comment, The Atlantic recently came out with an article that said meetings are up 250% since the pandemic. I know you all have experienced this. Uh, Back to back to back to back to back Zoom meetings all day, every day. So by the way, if you're here joining me on Zoom, Uh, or excuse me, on LinkedIn Live, Um, I thank you because I know I'm just sandwiched between other meetings and please find a way to just make this enjoyable for you because you don't have to perform here. This is just about giving you helpful tips. The other tip in the Atlantic said, or uh, inside in the Atlantic, that now productivity is peaking at 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. That's when a lot of people are actually getting work done. Um. That's pretty mind blowing. And you might be shaking your head and and relating to that. Um, Research overwhelmingly shows that the new way in which corporate America is operating is not in line with how we operate at our peak as human beings. So even though the conditions in corporate America have substantially changed since the pandemic, Now, this is a systemic issue that I'm hoping will be addressed longer term. But for now, let's just give you tools to do something different than everybody else. Swim against the current, which is the name of my company, if you didn't know, so that you don't get caught up in this swirl of emails and Zoom meetings where you can't think, you can't strategize You might not be having thoughts that are supporting your performance, your peak performance, and you don't have time to reset and recharge. Let's talk about how to decrease the stress around you in short and easy ways. 
You might be wondering who I am. My name is Amy Sanchez. I'm an executive coach. Prior to becoming a coach, I spent 13 years in corporate America uh, in marketing, working for big companies like Eli Lilly and Johnson & Johnson, as well as smaller companies. I did uh, worked with a couple startups, got my MBA at USC, went through a pretty significant personal change in my life, and I'd be happy to share that story with anybody who's interested. Made me reevaluate everything. That's when I identified coaching as my true calling and I got professionally trained and accredited as a coach. Been doing this for about four years. I run a company called Swim Against the Current. I work with director level and above, corporate leaders. Uh, and I've had the great opportunity and privilege to coach hundreds of leaders from um, big companies and small companies. And I'll let you read that list there. In short, I help corporate leaders minimize the overwhelm so they can maximize their happiness, impact, and earning potential. So all the things I'm sharing with you today are things that I share with my clients where I see measurable increases in happiness, impact, and earning potential. Today is for you. If you've had a successful career to date, you've made it to a senior role within corporate, but now you have so much to do that it's hard to enjoy your days. You ruminate about work and it's dominating your thoughts, both at home and at work. You can't enjoy yourself and tune in when you're at work. You might have trouble doing that when you're at home because you're still stuck, stuck, stuck thinking about work. Um, and when you do take time for yourself, you feel guilty. You know there's a better way, and occasionally you will tune into books and podcasts to help, but now you're ready for tangible improvement. Well, today is all about giving you the tools and tips to make those tangible improvements. Before we go into exactly what we're going to talk about, I want to give you some overall context. You're like a battery. So imagine, imagine you, your being is a battery. And there are three things that will recharge your battery, tending to your mind, tending to your body, and tending to your soul. I have a picture here of a cell phone because we would never let our cell phone battery run out. But we let our own battery run out pretty frequently. Doesn't it make sense that we would tune into ourselves just as much as we tune into our cell phone battery? Here's what we're going to be talking about today to help you with that. Uh, first, I'm going to be covering self-talk and how to tune into your self-talk or your self-narrative so it's working for you and not against you and unintentionally draining your energy. Number two, how to incorporate time to think and strategize. I know you all know as corporate leaders that unless you're clear on your strategy, it's really hard to know what to work, work on day to day. You can easily get pulled into all sorts of um, tasks and activities that don't ladder up to your strategy. So let's make sure you're super clear on your strategy, not only for you and your team at work, but what your personal strategy is as it relates to your career path and who you want to be as a human being. And number three, resetting and recharging. How do you incorporate this in an easy way? Why it's important for your mind? Now, the idea here is not to do everything I'm going to tell you about today. The idea here is to pull out one or two things that you think really speak to you and can move the needle for you and help you and try these things over the next couple of weeks and really um, pay attention to the difference that they make. Because what I found both with myself and with my clients is when you do incorporate these small yet easy things to do, uh, it's a game changer. I always start with self-talk. Whenever I work with corporate clients, this is where we start. Self-talk or self-narrative is where imposter syndrome and doubt live. It's also where motivation and confidence live. Whatever you're telling yourself, whether it is I can do it or I can't do it, you're right. What's interesting about self-talk is oftentimes pe the, these, these two dimensions here are a double-edged edged sword. So imposter syndrome and doubt can actually lead me to have more motivation because I work harder to prove my, my worth. I push through even the, in the face of doubt. Now, this is, in the end, yes, this does produce results. 
but it's a really draining way of doing that. And long-term, um, it will impact your energy and your ability to continue to show up in the way that you want to. And so what, what I encourage you to do is to keep the motivation and the confidence, right? Cause that's, that's important. Um, you know, thinking back to what those examples with the Olympic, the athletes in the beginning, and, and you all know this, right? Um, when you have the confidence, when you have the motivation, it's incredible what you can do. What I want to get you away from is comparing yourself to others, thinking you're not good enough and doubting yourself. The first way to do this is just by tuning into what you are telling yourself. Now, these thoughts are kind of firing on a conscious and unconscious basis. Uh, This is what's going to clear the path for us to clearly see the path forward and also know that we can get there. So this is a really important thing to start to tune into. I'm going to give you a little coach's secret in terms of how you can impact the self-narrative in a way that's going to produce meaningful results. Here's the sequence that happens. First, we have a thought, a thought that fires in our mind. That thought then sparks a feeling. Those feelings are linked to sensations that we're going to experience in our body. You've probably felt that sinking feeling in your stomach or the tightness in your chest. Uh, These are tied to feelings are also going to release chemicals in our bodies and we feel certain feelings that are going to either drain us or propel us. That feeling then leads to an action. So if you go back and you influence the thought, you can influence this sequence. And imagine how powerful this is as we look at a series of actions happening over time where you intentionally Uh, tell yourself the right empowering thoughts. And over time, this is going to lead to more fulfilling and um, motivating, positively motivating feelings. And your actions are going to change over time to produce meaningful results. So let me give you an example of this. Um, A lot of times what I'll do with my leaders, some of the early work we do is just kind of tuning into what were you telling yourself before that important meeting? I just worked with a leader yesterday, in fact, who told me that before he went to conferences or when he was at conferences, the thought that was going through his head is, wow, everybody here is so much more accomplished than me. Now, this is a really impressive individual who has a very um, long list of accomplishments, but that seed of thought had sort of formed from a very young age and had stayed with him throughout and continued to dominate his thought process. So the sequence we went through is, hey, is that still true? I mean, was that ever true? First of all, are you small? Are you inferior to these other individuals? And what would imagine what would happen if you no longer thought that about yourself and recognize everything you did bring to the table? How much that would change the way you showed up? So he's going through an exercise now, which I'm about to share with you to help him flip that script and flip that narrative so that he can continue to be a super powerful leader without the self-doubt. Here's what that looks like. Start tracking your internal narrative. Now, internal narrative, self-narrative, a lot of different words for this, but just tune into it because a lot of times what we're telling ourselves is firing both at a conscious and unconscious level, but because we're moving a hundred miles an hour, we're not tuning into it. Identify those negative repeat offenders. So once you start making a list, whether this be journaling on paper or putting it in your phone, you're going to start to see repeat offenders of things you're saying to yourself that just aren't helpful. Give those repeat offenders a name. This starts to personify them. And so when you start to personify them, you can start to um, turn them from sort of subjective into more tangible beings um, in your consciousness. Now you're going to start to uh, better recognize when they do show up and talk to them. Hey, listen, I know you're here. I hear you. But you know what? This is this is not the time for you to be talking to me. It is interesting how much 
confidence support we will give a friend or a mentor or a family member and how negatively we will talk to ourselves. Don't fall into that trap anymore. I used to do this all the time. I'll be very frank and, and, and uh, honest with you all. When I was working in corporate, I had no idea this is what I was doing. But every night when my pillow hit the bed, I would just reflect on my day and think about what did I do wrong today? And when I was approaching my day with that lens, it over time, it just kind of cut me down. And I was more reactive when I should have been more um, controlled. I, I doubted myself. And therefore, when I heard any sort of uh, dissent or challenge from others, I went into defense mode. Instead of being super clear and super solid about who I was, what value I brought and what my values were, so that when there was any sort of personal attack, which let's face it, we're, we're humans working in high stress situations, personal attacks happen, I know you've experienced it. Now, because I've done so much of this internal work when those attacks happen, um, nine times out of 10, that's not about you. That's about the other person's stuff. And they're throwing it at you. So when you kind of know who you are and you're grounded and your internal narrative is in check and supporting you, those things don't throw you off and they don't erode your confidence. Now, it still doesn't feel good, right? <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. It doesn't feel good when people tell us, um, tell us th negative things that we don't want to hear, especially when we're working so hard. But the, the key is not to let it shake you to your core. Uh, so really tune into that self narrative because you all are impressive leaders with a history of accomplishments. So make sure the way you're talking to yourself ladders up to what you'd see on your resume. I'm going to give you an example of a client that I worked with who this was a really effective strategy for. And now there's a lot of examples of this, but Kathy really stands out in my mind. She's a CMO for a well-known non nonprofit. When she came to me, she was working all hours of the day and night. She'd gained weight. Her personal life had just taken a, taken a hit. Uh, and she was giving all her time and energy to her work life and not feeling valued. Um, when challenges came up with her team, the way that she handled it is she would step in, she'd take over and she'd fix things. And as a result, there was a lot of high turnover on her team. And so what we did is we started, it, so we, I took her through all the coaching exercises, which did include this self narrative. Hey, let's turn that around because it is okay to delegate and let's address the trust issues that might be preventing you from being able to do that. And you also don't have to work all day and night. Uh, and neglect your family and neglect your health. Uh, here's why. And we took her that sequence and she, she had a lot of insights. After going through that, she stopped taking work home. She learned to trust and delegate and she started to work out regularly. This was like a, this was a game changer for her. Six months later, turnover on her team had significantly decreased. Thank goodness, because the churn that she was seeing added to the stress. So the stress started to decrease People recognized this difference. She got a pay raise. She started dating again. Her level of fulfillment in work went from a four to a nine. This is something that I measure with every single client. And on average, I see people come to me at about a four or a five, and then in, um, the yeah. average goes to about an eight or a nine after we're done coaching. So this is just an example of how this can play out for you. Let's talk about the second thing. It's time to think and strategize. I know you know as a corporate leader how important this is. Are you, do you have time for this? In this day and age when meetings have increased 250%, do you have time to think, think and strategize? So here's, here's an interesting question. Um, as a business owner, think time for me to think and strategize is, is paramount to what I decide to put my time and energy into because I'm a, a pretty much a one person show, you know, besides my admin. So if I'm not working on the right things, I can easily slide downhill. When I have my most insightful, thought, insightful thoughts are not when I'm working with my marketing agency and we're brainstorming. It's when I'm in spin class. 
now you're probably, I, I'm hoping some of you are nodding your heads and being like, yeah, mm-hmm, I got it. Yep. I get it. Uh, could be when you're out walking your dog, could be when you're showering, but the point is to create time and space so that your brain can assimilate all of the information that it's exposed to daily and use your smarts to turn it into a strategy, both for your you, for you and your team so that you're really, really clear about what you should be working on and what you should say no to. That's equally as important because uh, you can't say yes to everything. And that is a trap a lot of people fall into. But also time to think and strategize about you and what you want and what you need. I, I had a client that I worked with who was a very senior person uh, at Experian. And I would ask her this question time and time again. Hey, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And she didn't know because she never asked herself that. That question was so foreign to her because she was so focused on meeting everybody else's needs. So our goal was really to help her get in touch with her needs uh, so that she could take care of all those around her um, and stop feeling drained and stressed because there was an immense amount of of, uh, anxiety and, and stress. So how about you? When can you incorporate some time to have this time to think and strategize? Your competition is meetings, hands down, right? And emails. Um, We have gotten into this cycle where if we don't respond to an email within five minutes, we're a slacker. At least that's what we tell ourselves. Um, But If you make time to think and strategize and start putting those boundaries in place, it's really hard for my leaders to think about doing that at first. But here's a great example of with one of my clients, what happened when he did. Uh, As we dug in and started to peel away the onions with him, what we realized is when he operated at his peak, you're very welcome. Thank you for coming. When he operated at his peak is when he was in nature mountain biking how refreshing is it to get out into the elements and how little time do we have to do that when we're sitting in front of technology every day but as he reflected on his most successful time in life it was when he was consistently getting out mountain biking in the mountains Um, that's when he cleared his head that's when he was able to show up and perform now since that time When he was mountain biking consistently, he'd gotten married, he'd had kids, he'd rise to a senior leader in his financial institution uh, out in Colorado, and he didn't have time to do that anymore. And when he came to me, he was burnt out. So I challenged him to get back to that. And there is a lot of resistance at first. I can't do that. What are people going to think if I take two hours to work out during during the workday? I can't do that. But guess what happened? I see this all the time. He found the courage, went to his boss and said, Hey, listen, from eight to 10 on Friday, I am not going to be available because I'm going to be in the mountains on my bike. And this is an important piece for me to be productive and bring my fullest to work. You know what his boss said? Cool. (laughs) Oftentimes we think that people's response is going to be way worse. Uh, His boss really respected those boundaries. And he also, his coworkers also started to uh, do the same thing. So you can influence others by starting to set boundaries and protect your time and getting out to what you need to do to strategize and let your mind think. Sorry, this picture is a little fuzzy in terms of the pixels, but your reward when you incorporate time to strategize and think and get yourself away from the churn of back-to-back meetings and emails is that your team is going to start to row in the same sequence. You're not going to have one go in one direction, one going in the other direction. When you're super clear on what your strategy is and you're consistently communicating that to your team and telling them, hey, say no to things that don't ladder up to this. That's the other big piece of it. Give yourself permission, give your team permission because they they need to hear that from you too. Um, this is when you all can get super focused and start to make progress faster and say no to the things that you don't need to do those meetings that you know you don't really need to attend uh those meetings that could be quick messages but instead of turn into 30 minute meetings that's just such a strange phenomenon that's happened lately 
Um, but really, uh, this is going to have a huge impact, not only for you and your ability to think strategically about um, your focus at work and your focus at home, but your team as well, when you roll this out to them. So try this. Set aside a small amount of time weekly and daily. During this time, think and strategize about work, about your priorities, about your people, about your needs. Identify three things every week that must get done. Just three things, not 10, not 20, but what are the three things that if I focus on this, I'm really going to move the needle. And then experiment to find the right place to do this. Uh, for some people, it's going to be outside. For some people, it's going to be at their desk, you know, wherever you want to go where you're, you could just really open your mind and eliminate distractions. Now that's key to this. I had one client who was um, a chief scientific officer at a, at a biotech company who started to incorporate this every week on Monday. The way that he started his Monday morning was to sit down and strategize about what he needed to get done. What he found as a result is that he started, he did not just have knee jerk reactions to invites and emails he was able to create this agenda and, and priority in his mind so that he knew what to respond to. He knew where to invest his time and energy. Uh, and as a result, it allowed him to stop beating himself up because there was a lot of political things happening at the company. He actually ended up leaving the company, got recruited really quickly when he opened the door to possibilities. And now he is... Um, chief scientific officer at a newer biotech making more money built his team and it, fulfillment and work and life has, have increased substantially so there are tangible benefits to you doing this uh this was the story i just told so <laughs> uh oh no you know what i take it back this is another client that i worked with he was head of enterprise product he didn't have a seat at the leadership table he was conflicting with his boss. He was super frustrated and not feeling valued when he when he hired me. We reframed his current situation because he felt so powerless to what he could impart and what he could influence. And what he realized is what he really loved working on was solving like really messy issues that most people didn't want to address because he was a problem solver. <clears throat> so he took it on himself to start to address the most difficult challenge that the company had. And this was a smaller kind of a startup company who was on the brink of losing funding. Uh, and the CEO took note and started to invite him to weekly one-on-ones. As a result, his boss got let go. <clears throat> he was promoted to his boss's VP role uh, and his results, uh, his work actually enabled them to get new funding. So what a powerful story. His level of, of work fulfillment in this case went from a five to a nine. So just another example of how this can work for you if you put the time and space into it. You all know this. We have heard this time and time and time again. Here's the Cleveland Clinic validating this. And I, I always think this is a good reminder. Research has found that taking breaks can improve your mood, boost your performance, and increase your ability to concentrate and pay attention. If research shows this, and we hear this time and time and time and time again, um, how come we're not taking breaks? If anybody has any thoughts or comments about this, I'd love to hear from you. If you wanna just drop this in the chat. This really goes back to changing dynamics that we've seen particularly get worse since the pandemic. More meetings, more emails, longer working hours. But this is complete this environment that we've created is completely counter to validated research that shows what peak conditions for human engagement and performance are. So now it's your opportunity to reclaim those good working conditions. Here's what I want you to do is focus on creating the conditions for you to succeed. Now, whatever this looks like for you, for my, I told you about my client who used this to mountain bike and get, get out into nature and into the elements. 
uh, that was how he needed to reset and recharge. And that's been super powerful for him. What is your way to reset and recharge? Um, that there is a wide range of what this could look like for different people. I'll tell you what this is not, how not to use this time. Don't use this time scrolling social media, reading the news, catching up with a friend or reading a book. The idea is not to consume information when you create this time and space to get away from emails and meetings so you can think and strategize and recharge. There's so much power in just letting your mind meander or meditate disciplining your mind so that it doesn't um, jump around. So whatever this looks like for you, uh, think about it and, and try to do this. Um, creating this time and space is really gonna start to unlock some really powerful insights for you. Try this. When you have 10 extra minutes after three straight hours of working, uh, our tendency can be to, to jump into email or jump on social media or check out the news, uh, consume information, right? Like this leads to information overload in our heads. Instead, fill these extra moments of time um, when it makes sense. And this can't be all the time. I know there's gonna be times when there's a lot going on and you, you've gotta be, You've got to be consuming information, but be don't don't start to incorporate these practices once you hit burnout because then it's too late. Incorporate these when things are at their highest in terms of demands from you, so you can stand the test of time and continue to be operating at your peak. Um, one meditation app that I love and I always recommend is called Insight Timer. It's free. And you can filter based on the topic and the amount of time that you had. So that's something to try. And you know what? Not everybody likes meditation. Um, so if that's if it's it's not your thing, don't do it. Find something that works for you. The idea is to stop your thoughts from running. If you get into a negative space, use that exercise that we started with to tune into what your self narrative is and course correct so that the way you're talking to yourself is actually. Um, lending itself to increase your performance instead of draining your energy. Here's another tip. Be aware of how you, your book ends, how you start and end your day. I told you that I used to hit my pillow at night and think about what are all the things that I did wrong today. That was super draining. I had no idea. It, and it was the small practice that um, really had a very negative impact on me and how I showed up and how I felt about myself, which was really crummy. But I didn't know it. If you would ask me, I would have said, yeah, I'm super confident. <laughs> but that was a really, really bad practice that I had. So be aware of how you start and end your day. Um, here's the tendency. I see this all the time. People wake up and they grab their cell phone. Very common. The worst way to start your day. Before you start letting other people dictate what flows into your head and into your brain, Put yourself in the driver's seat. Here, here's something that um, that you can try. First thing when you wake up, think about one thing you're grateful for, one thing that you're going to let go, and one thing that you want to get done that day. And center and ground yourself. And so you can remember that as you make small yet meaningful decisions throughout the day. Same thing at night. How do you end your night? Um, try to incorporate something that's going to be fueling for you rather than uh, stressful or, or drain your energy. I love this. Check on yourself as much as you check your email. This is super important. We have this small opportunity. We've got one life to live a very short time when we're here on earth. And don't we want to make the most of it? So don't let email be the master of your day. Let you be the master of your day. Check on yourself as much as you check on your email. Now, here's the other thing I'll say. I've given you a lot of like things that you can think about, things that you can incorporate and try. Um, I've had a lot of leaders say, yeah, I know, I know I should meditate. I know, I know I should do it. You guys are in this world of should all day. 
uh, you should go to this meeting, you should check this email, you should take care of this urgent burning fire that, is, uh, that, that we've got to address. Um, you should pick up the kids, you should clean up the house, you should do the laundry, da, 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 and the list goes on. I'm going to give you the freedom and encourage you to get away from shooting yourself. So this is, this is not another thing to add to your plate. This is a time for you to check in and say, but what do I want to do? As I reflect on past times in my life that were really joyful and, and I was operating at my peak, uh, both at work and at home, what was different about my circumstances and about the things that I was doing in my life? And start to reincorporate some of that so that you can recharge and, and enjoy yourself. If you find that this has been enough, then I applaud you and I'm really excited to see where this takes you. Please keep me posted. I love to hear from you all. If you want support and accountability, uh, I am accepting people to coaching. I've got a couple of spots left. It's actually been a really, really busy year. I'm super grateful, um, but I do have a couple of spots left. My coaching program is easy. It's designed to fit a very busy schedule. I work with corporate leaders, director level and above all the time. Uh, and so this is a proven program that works. You've seen some of those case studies. Yes, you need to make time and dedicate yourself to this process. It's about one hour every other week, as well as the exercises you're going to be doing between coaching sessions. But in six months, you could be in a completely different headspace and reaping the benefits. So if you want to go through a structured program that will help you with this and have an accountability partner, um, doors are open to have a discussion to explore what coaching would look like. And I'll tell you how to do that in just a minute. Why coaching? Uh, a lot of people don't know what coaching is. Here's a little cliff notes. Um, coaching is great if you're busy and you wanna know exactly what to do in your limited amount of time. If you wanna maximize happiness, impact and earning potential, that is what my program is focused on doing. If you want an unbiased, experienced source who isn't your friend, who isn't your partner, who isn't your coworker or family member, whose well-being will be impacted by choices that you make, uh, working with a coach is a good option um, and a safe, confidential place for you to share your thoughts that you might not feel comfortable sharing with others. Here's the other cool thing. Executive coaching can be company funded. So particularly if you're director level and above, a lot of companies will pay for you to work with an executive coach because your investment in that process will directly benefit them because your performance will improve. By working with me, you get assessments to help learn about you, your preferences and your default style. And this is not the like, oh my gosh, another assessment that I have to do and take time away from my busy day. These are assessments that are really insightful and cool. And uh, I can't tell you the level, level of um, change that my leaders benefit from after going through these assessments. Mm. Bi-weekly coaching calls, dedicated exercises mm. between calls to accelerate mm. prog progress. And, I, and as I shared before, I, I've worked with over a hundred corporate leaders from tons and tons of different space, um, spaces, industries, big companies, small companies, lawyers at Stanford, educational institutions. So it doesn't matter where you're coming from. Thank you, Kim and Lisa, appreciate your time. Um, doesn't matter where you're coming from, this program works. Uh, this is not a fit if you aren't serious about making a change. You really do have to be there and be ready for it. If you aren't an action taker, which is probably not any of you because you're corporate leaders, if you want to press the easy button, I will have clients who come in and just say, tell me what to do. And that's that's not the point of coaching. It's about you getting in touch with yourself. And I'm going to give you the tools to do that. If you aren't ready to invest the time and money in creating a career that will be sustainable and fulfilling, um, I do have a lot of people who will schedule time with me just because they want a free consult. And that's not what this is about. This is really for people who are really willing to explore the idea of investing in themselves and um, investing in this program. And if you aren't looking for a deeper impact to impart positivity on the world, that's that's what I'm all about is I want to really, at the end of the day, my purpose is really to help great talented leaders like you make a positive difference in this world. So if that sounds appealing to you, you can schedule time to chat with me here. And I'm gonna post this in the comments um, so that you can see it as well. And uh, we can just connect 30 minutes. I will talk to you, I will talk you through, you and I will determine if coaching is the right fit for you. Uh, thank you, Sandra.
Uh, appreciate you coming. Uh, and if it is, we'll talk about, you know, personal funding versus company funding and how you can ask for company funding and also what, what your journey could look like. So I really appreciate you all being here and spending your Friday afternoon with me. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend and keep me posted. I'd love to hear how some of these changes and um, new practices led you to it happier, more fulfilled, more productive life. Enjoy the weekend. Take care.